Hi there, thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean, this is Woodwork Journey, and today we've got another mega cheap option for you if you want it. And this is a five pound gen saw that I'm gonna try and make into a nice little dovetail saw with the proper handle and all sorts. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's get into it. Right, so this is the puppy. This will be interesting. So what we're going to be doing is, I've literally just had this delivered. This is a five pound, 250 mil, made in Germany, gents saw. And it's a gents saw because we have this handle going on right here. This um, means that you get very little um, orientation. So when you're sawing with it, you don't really know if you're sawing straight or if it's going that way, one way or the other. So it can be a little bit difficult. Difficult. Now I know Rob Cosman tends to sand off a section where the heel of his, uh, his thumb sits and that gives him some level of registration. But today we're gonna do something totally different. Let me show you what that is. I'll make sure I leave a link to this down below, but this um, website right here can give you a different, a whole bunch of different options when it comes to handles. And so that's what we're going for. So what I've done is I've downloaded two different types. Now let me see if I can separate them so I can show you what's what. Now these are um, open handles like you'd find on sort of the posher saws. We've got one which is a medium and one which is a large apparently. Um, at the bottom there it says that it's a, a medium with no medallion and this one says that uh, it should say that it's a large with no medallion and you can see what we've got going on there it gives us the sizing it gives us templates that we can um, do we can also uh, drill directly from that and all sorts so i'm going to find a bit of wood that i can make this from i think i'm going to go with the larger one because i have got reasonable size hands and we'll take it from there this is the saw we're going to be using, this Augusta Master 250mm made in Germany. Um, the teeth are very, they're very kind of angular. It looks like it's going to be an interesting cutting pattern. Um, but there's a reasonable amount of thickness. It's not the thinnest plate in the world. But yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting little affair. So we'll see how this gets on and uh, we'll take it from there. Before I do anything, actually, what I'm going to do is just do a test cut. This is a bit of American hard maple. And so let's just see how this cuts and see if it uh, is going to need setting up on the on the teeth. They're very, very kind of angular. I think we're going to have to reset them, but uh, let's have a go. Yeah, I mean, that is not a great cutter, to be fair. And it is a relatively large um, kerf. This is the kerf from this saw. Hopefully it's in focus. And this kerf here comes from my footprint saw. So, you know, there there is a relatively large kerf. But like I said, I think what we're going to have to do is sort those teeth out if that's in focus. But we can do that afterwards, and this is an experiment at the end of the day. Right, now I am going to use, and I know it's going to upset some people, but I've got some birch ply. You can see that these are offcuts. Now, I was going to sandwich two together, but I measured the uh, the width of my, uh, of my footprint saw handle, and that is just over three quarters of an inch. Just, well, round about three quarters of an inch. So seeing as this is more or less the same, um, I thought, fuck it, we'll just, we'll have a go with this. If it's too thin, we can always double it up and make another one. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're going for. So now I've cut that out of there. I can see exactly what's going on if I stick it down onto here. So I've got some blue stick, which is like print stick or bots, uh, whatever it is, like this lipstick stuff. Um, and uh, that's what we're just gonna stick on because, well, the end fall out. Hopefully it should be relatively easy to clean off. I could use double-sided tape or all manner of things. I think that's the end of that tube though. Right, let's 
get that down on there. So that's the drawing that's attached on there, but I chose that it was going to be a 10 inch uh, dovetail saw. And that, as you can see, is pretty much exactly right when it comes to the measurements on there as well. So that's going to work very well in our favor. Now, what I am going to have to do is cut this off and I'm probably going to have to cut a triangle off the back of here as well but uh, we'll worry about that in a little while. Now one of the really nice things we've got here is we've got little pluses signs there. Now those next to the uh, next to the numbers mean that here we've got an inch and a quarter force and a bit. If you put that smack bang in the middle of that cross right there then that's going to give you that curve. There we've got one inch, there we've got inch and a sixteenth, there we've got uh, inch and seven sixteenths, um, and that one's just a seven sixteenths. A little bit going on there as well. So what we can do is we can uh, get all those sorted out. I don't know if I've got any imperial bits though, so I might just have to kind of make it up as I go along. Before getting stuck in though, I am just going to use a little centre punch and uh, just give these a little uh, section for the drill to sit in. Okay, I think I've done them all. And the one thing that I don't have at the moment is any uh, proper fixing screws. So I might have to bodge that for today. We'll see how we get on when we get to that part. What I've done there is I've actually transferred the uh, measurements to millimeters. So I've got 7 sixteenths is 12, 1 inch is 25, inch and a sixteenth is 27, uh, 1 inch and 7 sixteenths is 37, and one inch and a quarter is 31.75, so say 32. I've rounded up for most of them, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go with that. So right there, I've drilled the holes as close as I can get them. Sometimes they're metric, sometimes they're millimeters. Oh, I've got one more there that I've forgotten. And then we can uh, hit the bandsaw. So this is what we've got going on right here. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with that one, to be honest with you. Now, before I start shaping it, apparently the best thing to do is to um, worry about the cut that's going to go down the middle. So what I might do is I might just curve this a little bit better and then we'll get the saw handle and we will uh, chop off the bit that we need to chop off and then we'll start making it fit here before we start worrying about this. Now all these lines going on here as well um, show where there's going to be a an angle so it's not just flat like along here for instance it goes down at an angle and you can round it round but uh, yeah it's no point in spending loads of time doing that if um, if you're uh, if you cock up the handle fitment. Okay, right, let's start moving on to the saw. Right, so we can see on the drawing that the spine sticks up just above the flat section of the handle. So that means it's going to be just above that. So what we've got to do is see about... Actually, I've just realised that there is a cutting line on here to show where to cut on the uh, on the saw. Well, I'm going to go and do that, and I'll show you where we're at afterwards. <laughs> Did just pop that in some water straight away afterwards. I don't think this part of the blade is hardened, but uh, you know the teeth are. So just do that, and then we can clean up. The... I'm doing my best not to bend the blade as much as I can as well. So that's what we're going to be looking like, hopefully. What I've got to do now is sort out the exact middle of the uh, the handle. Right, so we are looking at 18.4. So if I put this to 19, no, uh, 9.2, that'll give us a rough indication of middle. Right there, lock that in. Now, if I can score a line. So now I've scored that first line. I'm going to get my gauge into that line. Tighten that up and then go a little bit deeper 
with this. Pop a little ink line in that so we can see what we're working with is what I am hoping to, uh, to saw to. Now on the template there is a little line which should tell us where we can stop. So that's that there. And up top we stop at that kind of elbow, shoulder, corner thing there. There is where we stop underneath and it goes all the way around. Right, let's get it done. I'm going to have to use this to cut this though. Oh, you thought sawing normally was tough. One of the benefits of using plywood at this point is that um, I can follow one of the layers of ply. Oh, I think I'm starting to go off a little bit, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. Okay, so what I've got going on right here isn't too bad. I'm kind of done a relatively decent job going there. I've gone, oops, hit the camera. I've gone down to that line there. And you can see there's a very faint dotted line going across there. And that's where the blade is going to be situated. So yeah, hopefully I've cut it straight. Now though, I am going to have to widen the cut to deal with the wider spine. So I think I don't know the best way of doing this actually. Not really any choice other than just trying to cut it and be really, really delicate with it. Again, we've got lines on there to let us know how far to go, but yeah. Some time ago, I made a kerf knife out of a uh, bit of a hacksaw. So this is actually working out to be okay. I'm just kind of sawing my way through it and, uh, and getting down to where I need to be. Right, so I'm confident that loads of people are going to say, oh, you should have done that at the start. But using a drill bit and just using it like a router, but kind of just sanding the inside with a small drill bit has made a massive difference. And I keep breaking the end up. <laughs> Starting to come together now. I don't know if that hole is right though. It feels like that should be further in. So I might have to make this slice just a wee bit deeper. Make sure you're wearing at least safety glasses for doing this because I've had two uh, end bits of drill fly off and hit me in the face since I've been doing it. So make sure that you at least have your safety specs on. Ta-da! Right, well I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to put through these and what I've got is I've got some M6 Allen key bolts. Um, not ideal, but they'll do for the time being until I get something prettier. So what I'm going to do essentially is, in fact, I might have that because that grips things a little bit, I think. So um, what we might do is have that going directly into the wood and then on the other side, a washer and a lock nut. So, yeah, let's uh, see how we get on. Of course, what we need to do is drill these first. So I'm going to drill the holes for the and then I'm going to punch into the uh, blade and then we're going to saw that uh, drill that through as well. Alrighty, as we can see, bolts are in. They're not tightened yet. I've still got the nuts to go on the other end. I did a slight relief so the uh, washers can sit in there as well and look a little bit tidier. But no, all things considered, I think we're making a decent level of progress. So now I'm just going to take this off again, do a little bit of shaping, and then we'll take it from there. Alrighty, so I am going to have to be somewhat careful because we are using uh, plywood as opposed to... Uh, as opposed to some other woods. So 
So yeah, it might be splitting, but I I've used the ply just because I had it and it's also, it's stable. So the fact that it's super stable means that it's, uh, it's never going to go wobbly, is it? But yeah, so we will uh, start going through here and just seeing what, uh, what I can do. I'm going to start by using a rasp and we'll take it from there. Now you can't see exactly what I'm doing from this position, but what I'm trying to do is follow the lines that are on the other side and they look getting that I'm using the curved side of this rasp I'm trying not to be too aggressive with it I am trying to be careful because uh, of the plywood as I said uh, but also this is the fun aspect of it because once you start getting the shape you can then really train it into exactly what feels comfortable in your hand Oh, it's starting to come together already. Fairly sure this horn is going to break off. <laughs> that is feeling alarmingly comfortable already. That really is getting really, really comfortable. So I'm just going to do this bit and then I'm going to go over it with a file and then we can worry about sandpaper. I won't bore you with all of that. Alrighty, so day two. Now, yes, I'm wearing the same clothes because these are my workshop clothes. It's not a continuity thing, but had I thought of it and not just explained why I'm a Grebo, then that would have been straight. Anyway, let's get into it. So I'm using my Smurdex discs. I've got a 180 there and I've got the very angry 100 here and we're going to get into kind of just smooth. I mean, it's looking good. It's looking good, but I was trying it last night. Well, I wasn't soaring with it, but I was fitting it in my hand and it fits absolutely perfectly. I'm so, so happy with how it goes. But yeah, let's see if we can get this puppy refined and then uh, jobs are good. I'm going to start with using the, uh, the hand grip and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take it off the, that, cut strips off it dogs in the background and <laughs> we'll take it from there I think I've pretty much done it I've gone over it with 220 and it's really really comfortable in my hand it feels nice and soft and lovely um maybe just sort out this make it slightly less of an angle corner and then uh, i think we're good for putting a finish on it i'm not really sure what finish to put on it i will stick some bald linseed oil on there to start with and we'll see how we're looking Alrighty then, so that's what we're looking like. It's very, very smooth. It went with 100 Murdex, then it went with 220 or 240 Murdex. Then I went with uh, two coats of boiled linseed oil. And then after that, I did a, uh, a coat of um, Leo's from Hand Eye Craft or Handy Craft. Um, and let's get this bad boy on the uh, on the saw shall we okay it's actually a number 10 and i actually found my number 10 that makes a change doesn't it okay let's get that in there now i think i said earlier but these are m6s i think i said and uh that's the same size as um number plate bolts i believe but at some point i will definitely purchase some proper uh, saw inserts and and nut thingies as I'd hoped, the uh, there is a, the, the the Allen key is grabbing. So once it starts, it starts going. It's not uh, needing very much tightening up. I did tighten too much though, and uh, started going inside the wood. So let's not go quite as hard on this one. Right now, I did say earlier on. I will show you quickly before this video ends why this is such a bad saw. But let's just give it a go. I've still got to trim these off, but I'll do that after the video. Do you know what? It's 
It's a lot nicer to saw with than it was with that handle. It's a lot nicer. And it actually, it actually does the trick, you know? It's not the thinnest kerf in the world, but there you go. Right, let's start finishing up. As I said, I'm just going to talk about these just for a quick hot second. And that's just because these teeth, I think it looks like that these are the only pieces of the sword that's hardened. They're in a kind of a V shape rather than having any kind of forward facing bite. So they're certainly not the best. I don't think you're going to be able to resharpen them and you can feel that the kerf is unnecessarily large, but it'll do you in a pinch. And at the end of the day, if you put a swizzy handle on it, who's going to know the difference? So that, as they say, is that. And for the case of however much this saw cost, which is like seven quid or whatever it was, a bit of off cut of plywood now before you get all angry. Obviously, you can use any wood you like, but using these um, little templates from Blackburn are so, so, so easy. It just makes the whole process really enjoyable. It didn't take that long to do. The hardest bit was actually sort of chiseling out the bit for the spine in the, in the front there. And... Uh, next time I do this I'll remember that I've got that drill idea where I just sort of drill in multiple times and then use the drill up and down that makes the whole process a lot easier however all I'm going to say is that that is so much more comfortable I'm probably not going to use it a whole hell of a lot but I'm just really really happy that it works and I will certainly definitely be using these and the large one to make handles for other saws in the future because that it just fits my hand so, so well. And it made sawing this horrible little piece of, uh, of, of soft plywood, uh, no, of softwood, really quite enjoyable, even with these horrific teeth. That's about it. I, oh, I know that there is a brass-backed saw on Amazon at the minute. And I think it's, I've got a feeling it's about sort of 20 quid, 25 quid, something like that. So you get something like that, you make your own handle out of a nice bit of wood and you know, you've got a, uh, a solid, just search for gent saws rather than brass back pistol grip saws or anything like that. If you find a gent saw, it'll have this handle, wang that off, cut it up a little bit and then poof, make it something sexy. That's it. Thank you so much. I hope you found some value in this. If you have, please do drop me a like. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And if you really enjoyed it, give me a subscribe. That would be brilliant. Thank you so much. And I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.